Hi, this is another episode of Unicast and today we are looking at the DEC695 device. I already made a video about the unboxing process and I also opened up the device to have a look inside it. So if you're interested in that one, I leave a link in the description. In this video we are focusing more on how the device performs. For that I did some benchmarks. If you haven't seen my first review about the DEC740 device, I will also leave a link in the description. It is a little bit more powerful than the 695 and it has two 10G Ethernet ports and also is very low on power drain. As you can see, the DEC695 is somewhat similar in the design, which I like very much. It is an all metal casing once again and also, like the DEC740, it has no moving parts, so it is absolutely silent during working hours. And this is why I think the target audience for this kind of a device is more like the private customer or Soho, like small office and home users. For home users, the device might be a little bit pricey because you will get uh, devices with four times. 1G uh, much cheaper actually but what is the reason for this higher pricing than let's say in contrast to all those MIPS devices people run OpenWRT on. When we have a look at the hardware details um, first of all as I said earlier it's made all from metal and it has for example dedicated Intel networking chips it's the 211 one chip for each port this is not what you can expect from a device in the lower pricing range especially when you're looking at the fact that those chips are a little bit rare right now apart from that the processor is also much more powerful than all those tp link and netlink and other devices so it's not so easy to compare apart from the 1g interfaces you have a usb type a port to connect flash drives usb sticks to it next to the usb a port there is a an older type of a usb port it's called mini usb and this is used for serial connection to a computer the device comes with a cable included so you can just hook it up to your computer and connect it via a terminal emulator for example. As you can see there is no video output. This is why you would need it sometimes. If you destroy your configuration and you are not able to connect to a device via Ethernet anymore. Over here on the right uh, is the power connector. The power supply is also included of course. Let's have a look at the interior once again. We can see it has a dedicated M2 SSD storage. So here is another reason why this is not really comparable to a MIPS based device, which has maybe like 64 or 128 megabytes of RAM, sometimes a bit more. And even the RAM is uh, replaceable. I suggest you do not open the device by yourself because your warranty will be gone but let's say after warranty time if you would like to expand your storage or your memory I did not try if it works but why would it not <laughs> the CISO of course ships their devices with OPN Sense pre-installed which is a really good firewall appliance uh, firmware so if you're not already familiar with it it's a fork of PFSense so there are lots of similarities but also some differences. I also wanted to know if other operating systems would boot since it's an x86 device and I was lucky it worked. Um, I mean I tried some operating systems like Debian which booted just fine and I put some links into the description about what you need to do in order to boot it and OpenWT also worked but let's say FreeBSD of course also should work and uh, I don't know, in some rare cases it might make sense to maybe boot up like a Proxmox and then virtualize your, your OPN sense on it. But that's a corner case, I guess. So I take uh, some time to benchmark the device. 
the CISO advertises some technical specification about what the device can um, achieve in terms of numbers. And for that purpose, I built my own test setup where I have the DUT, the device under testing, which is of course the DEC. And I had three computers. One of it has uh, two dedicated Ethernet interfaces and I used uh, Linux with network namespaces. So this you can imagine to be two devices, like, like, like if I had four computers that were connected to the DEC, even there are actually only three. And I used iPerf for a throughput test. So um, between the server one and itself, I routed some traffic in both directions at the same time and I tried to achieve uh, 1G in both directions. And the same I did on two other interfaces between a desktop and a server. So I have had uh, four iperf clients and four iperf servers running at the same time. This is what I got. I achieved a little bit more than 2.1 gigabits per second. And at first glance I was a little bit curious about why this differs so much from what uh, Decisio advertises. They say it has a theoretical maximum of 3.3 gigabits per second and this is only as I said earlier, a theoretical number, because this is what the CPU can achieve if it had more interface ports, but it doesn't. When we look at the port-to-port -port traffic, uh, this is a good number because the port-to-port -port traffic decides or advertises of 900 megabits per second and I was able to achieve 940, so a little bit higher. I also did some T-Rex based benchmarks, take a look at them if you like in my written review, of course, I leave a link in the description. I made a benchmark with internet mix. So it's different uh, types of packages that are being sent over the wire. And I also used HTTP benchmarks with T-Rex. Please take a look at the results online. When I looked at the power consumption, it is really low which is not only why uh, they are using a processor that is a little bit uh, clocked below what the technical specification of MD show. So um, in idle, I only had about eight watts and um, during booting and other benchmarking, I mean, it's always between 10 and 13 watts. Decisio advertises them to be at uh, around 12, so this is exactly what I got in my measurements. The prices for power are on the rise, so I think this is a very important point. You get a quite powerful firewall hardware, which can handle lots of connections, which can handle lots of clients, where, let's say, a Fritzbox, which is a very common device for internet connectivity over here, cannot uh, catch up to. Especially when I try to compare both devices I made a review for, the DEC 740 and the DEC 695, I would have to say that I would uh, take much rather the DEC 740, which is like 200 euros or a little bit more of a price. And uh, it has a more powerful CPU it has two times uh, SFP plus 10G ports. So if you're uh, looking at a more powerful device, I would suggest to take a look at the DC740. It is also around 10 to 13 watts of power consumption. So very similar, but has a more powerful processor if you would like to have some intrusion prevention running, which is the DC695 also capable of, but it, it depends on your use case. For example, how much users you have, what kind of traffic you have, if you would like to run OpenVPN, IPsec, or maybe like an IP, um, a WireGuard VPN tunnel. Yeah, that's it for the moment. I hope you liked my review. 
leave a thumbs up and see you later guys.